Hello viewers, Super GT here, how are we doing? Today is a very special day because Buckmore Park is reopening after being literally this close to going under completely. Now in this video, I am going to be murdering some YouTubers, driving a two-seater cart, <laughs> but also driving a Formula One car. Yes, driving a Formula One car around a cart track. And there it is. Hello viewers. Hello viewers. Hello viewers. This is the Surtees TS19 1976 Formula One car sponsored by Durex. So please do get all of your Durex puns in the comments. Yes, here it is. The 1976 Formula One car, which I will be driving around Buckmore Park cart circuit. Yes, that's right. A cart circuit. Now, these cars are not easy to get into. Allow me to demonstrate as we almost knock off the wing mirror. Off this priceless machine. You have to twist your feet in to get them into the pedal area. Otherwise, you're going to hit the steering rack. And it's actually a very cosy experience once you're in there, I must say. And that's just half the problem. Getting in is just 50%. You have to get out as well. And that is not a particularly graceful manoeuvre, I must say. But we did eventually do it without smashing into the mirror this time. Now, I first started my karting career in 2001. So 20 years ago, I first came here. And that was the first time I ever stepped foot in a kart. And I've been at Bummer Park every year since then. So it does mean a lot to me personally to see the track back up and running, back on its feet after suffering a lot of financial difficulty. It was really on the brink uh, last year and it looked like the track would possibly go under. So it's a good thing that that hasn't happened as we see someone get uh, sent to the Shadow Realm at turn one. Uh, so it's quite interesting actually just looking at some of this old footage as well um, from many, many years ago. I even have some footage here of the dummy grid. I think it's one of these grid slots here. I was lined up next to Jolian Palmer who actually became an F1 driver a couple of years ago. So of course it's really cool, you know, just to see um, the people I used to race against and you know where they've gone to, Formula One drivers in, in some cases. But then it was my turn to become a Formula One driver and this is most certainly going at the top of my CV and Tinder profile. So here it is, going to climb into the Durex machine. So yes, do comment away all of your hilarious puns. But... What an experience this is going to be, driving an F1 car around a kart track, no less. So trying to climb in with some dignity and grace, if I have any. And my head actually extends above the roll hoop. So ideally, I will try not to roll this car. I did forget one thing, though. I don't have earplugs, is that all right? <laughs> it's your ears. <laughs> oh, God. So I kind of forgot about the biblical noise this thing is going to make as we start it up here. Let's give it a go. I'll let you listen to this. Alright, hold the throttle open a bit. So there it is, the monstrous sound of a 1970s Formula 1 car roaring into life. We did have to just clunk it into first gear. There we go, the thumbs up. And now just releasing the clutch as we edge onto the power. And I am now officially a Formula One driver. There it is, look at that. Amazing stuff. As we get onto the circuit, let's do a couple of laps of Buckmore Park in a Formula One car. Something I never thought I'd say. Let's give it a good go, shall we? So we're driving down the bottom end of the track here. Very tight corners. Now, you, the first thing I'm noticing is just how much rotation you have to put into the wheel. Uh, I suppose an F1 car is not designed to go around a kart track and therefore it, you know, the steering is a bit off. But then we're just really trying to edge the speed up slowly. This is an invaluable machine. We do not want to wreck it, send myself into the Shadow Realm, but also the car and therefore my bank balance. That could be a very dangerous thing in many respects. That part there is probably the only opportunity on the lap to get the full power down for even just a few moments. Uh, cutting out the two hairpins as they're just too tight for this car. Now, 
Um, one of the key things about this lap, you probably notice, is that I'm not changing gear. That's not because it's um, that's not because it's automatic, but that's just simply because we were just told, just keep it in first because it's just a lot easier. You could probably get it just about into second gear on some of the straights, but for the most part, it's just easier to keep it in first. The pedals were actually very tough. They were quite tricky, and it was quite a primitive machine. But that's probably what you expect. What you'd expect from a 70s Formula One car. They don't quite have the refinement of a modern one. But look at that. It really is quite a strange sight. Seeing an F1 car drive around the track. And you know what? I'm going to leave you with a couple of laps here. So you don't have to listen to my voice over the top of it. You can just enjoy the sound. I'll do one lap like this. And then one lap with the alternative view. a little bit more confident with getting on the power and i just really wanted to by this point maybe just take it out onto a uh, a fully blown car circuit that would have been such a great experience about to you know change the gears and truly experience the full power of this car um but you know it was an honor just to be able to do this an honor to be able to uh, drive around this track which i've been at for so many years and then doing it in a formula one car of all cars but then rounding out the final corner, we see the chequered flag. I'm going to put my fist up in the air and pretend that I just won a Formula One race, which obviously I didn't. But um, we can all dream, can't we? So pretty much as quickly as that, the session was over and we had to bring it in, unfortunately. Um, but my goodness, what a, what a brilliant experience that was. Um, in the words of Lewis Hamilton, Hashtag blessed, I suppose. That pretty much sums it up. So we have to whip it into the pit lane. And then we get pushed back into the uh, the garage. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> That was unreal, that was. Good, that was incredible. Oh. Oh. Now to get out. Oh. Oh. oh man, that's so good. <laughs> so, wow. What an experience driving an F1 car around Butmore Park car circuit. Really, really enjoyed it. Of course, thank you to Bummel Park for entrusting me with the Surtees TS19. And uh, thankfully, I didn't write it off. That wasn't everything we did here at the track, though. We were here on a separate day with a bunch of YouTubers who have a different type of fun. All right, so you might recognize a fair few people in this shot because most of us, anyway, are at least supposed to be YouTubers apparently um one such character here ben daly not knowing how to turn his camera on 
So we'll just do that for him. There we go. No problem at all, Ben. No problem at all. Uh, so first up, we have a uh, qualifying session or practice slash qualifying session. Everyone deciding to drive slow and in single file, which isn't a normal way to do a qualifying session. But anyway, we uh, we bump Matt Amos going down the hill, and then no more than a lap later, we were involved in a truly horrific and not staged accident. What are you doing, mate? Thankfully, I was swiftly saved and rescued from the wall and could escape. Um, but that was the end of practice slash quali. Let's see where we are on the grid. Ryan, you got the quickest car. How much did you pay him? Okay, so on the way to the grid, Hayden Gullis, look at this. Utter filth. Completely blocking me. And, uh, you know, that's just a really bad show of sportsmanship there. Probably should be banned from the race. Um, but anyway, we lined up in P6 in typical Super GT fashion. Alongside Mr. Ben Daly, there he is. Ben Daly. Now, when the lights go green, that typically means the race has begun. But not to Ben Daly, because it took him about a year to react to that. So we swift, uh, swiftly cut across to the inside. And then give Gamer Muscle a nice little love kiss. And then on the exit of this corner here, I saw a very good opportunity to send Aldous here into the Shadow Realm. So turning into this right hand, I'm going left and just sending him into another dimension. And then there he goes, vaporized, never to be seen again. Uh, Gamer Muscle here trying to run me onto the grass, having none of it, keeping the inside line. And I'm in fourth. Jimmy Broadbent there just cutting in ahead whilst I was busy killing people. So sat here in fourth place as we head down the hill. Matt Amos deciding that he doesn't know where to break for the bottom corner. And then losing three positions very swiftly to show you one mistake. Big consequences. So I'm up into third. And then Jimmy going for the move on Jan Mardenborough. Uh, that's me not running too wide. As we go through the S's, they're still side by side, actually. And then Jan Mardenbro actually manages just to tuck in ahead and uh, keep the lead of the race. I needed a lot of this battling, so I felt like my qualifying pace definitely wasn't there. But I needed the guys in front of me to start fighting each other as much as possible. Up into turn one, maybe a lap or so later, Jimmy takes the lead. Is Mardenborough going to take that? No, he's not. Up the inside, he locks up. Smashes Jimmy out of the way. Waves him back through. I'm going to try and get through with him. And I kind of am, but it's not enough to take the lead. I'm going to have to settle in behind into second. And I'm blocking off Ed Bridle there, just behind. He is a, a fellow Praga driver alongside Jimmy. So I'm in the Praga sandwich as we head down the hill into Paddock. A little bit late. And then not getting good drive off that turn. And Ed uh, senses that weakness. He's straight in. And moves up into second. I'm down to third. And tuck into the slipstream. Well, the gap actually opened up quite a bit. I just completely lacked pace. Um, by this point here, they were fighting a bit too much. You see Ed's reaction there. I don't think he was too happy with that. Fighting. And then actually they decided to not fight. And actually they pulled away quite a lot. Um, with Jan Marnaburg getting ahead. With the universal signal for let's work together and move forwards and i was more than happy to oblige with that except i was too slow and then he just drove off to the distance anyway um so it was a fourth place i wish it was a more dramatic ending but it wasn't so i can't really drum it up to be anything more than it was i don't know i had nothing on the straight me neither i had no fucking day so it was so easy so like to, and i'm right behind you I Kill, said it. We killed you at the start. We were talking about taking out. We were talking about taking each other out. Yeah. Okay, here we have the biggest challenge of them all. Here we have a two-seater cart. Check it out. Check it out. And on one side, we have the pedals. Nicely coloured and demonstrated by these nuts, as you can see. And on the other side, we have... Well, there's two steering wheels, but we'll only be using this one. The challenge is, we're all going to go in pairs and we're going to see who's the quickest. So. Look at these stupid YouTubers with their cameras. Look at them. 
What? <laughs> Look at them. They're such a special breed, aren't they? 1v1 one one me. Well, come here then. Welcome to 3D Broadbent from all yeah, angles. Yeah. Yeah. These bloody yeah. people with cameras. So Subscribe to Mr. Aldous. Steering. Yep. No Hayden Gullis. I died. It's his the... fault. You didn't realise this. Okay, I'll capture it for you. Yeah. Every, everyone's yeah. rooting for that now, you know. Yeah. Yeah. We all want it to yeah. happen. Off to their deaths they go. Okay, so into the two-seater challenge. Hayden and Aldous went first. And it does look pretty funny. They managed to do a 55.3. So that was the benchmark. Next up, Gamer Muscle and Ben Daly. They did a 56.8. Oh, good God. You did well. Oh, you did good as well. <laughs> <laughs> now we have oh, Praga driver Ed Bridal. Mr. Right. Broadbent going oh, out. Uh, good luck, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What do you reckon, Aiden? It's looking good. I think you? that looks like a 55.7, so we've still got about four tenths in the bag. Right? Still got to go four tenths quicker. And, and they probably weigh about 30 kilos less than most of them. You're learning. Get those excuses in. Exactly, exactly. Jimmy and Ed managed a 55.2, which was the new benchmark to beat. Are you feeling optimistic? Yes. We're going to do it. Full send. Full send was the mantra for me and Matt, or Matt and I, if I speak grammatically correctly. As we climb into the two-seater cart, I've never done this before. It was a very weird experience, as you can probably imagine. Now, I'm on the steering. Matt, on the right, is on the pedals. So, all I have to worry about is steering the cart. But I have no control on when it brakes or when it accelerates. That's completely up to him. So, this is a very, very strange experience. Um, the cart is moving, and I'm not doing anything to control that. That's been done by Matt here on the right-hand side, and he doesn't even have to turn the wheel. That must be a very strange experience as well. Now, all I could do is just steer the best I know and hope that the pedals are being done in a good order. And to be fair, straight out of the blocks, um, I felt as though the, the, pedal, the pedaling, if I can speak, Pedaling was actually being done really well, and this was something of a dream combination between myself and Matt to come down the hill. Now, this car, obviously, because there's two of us in the car, that does increase the weight quite a lot, and therefore, you go flat through a lot of corners that you otherwise wouldn't be in a single-seater car. So, gave him the thumbs up there. That was our first lap. I felt like it was okay. Now, coming up the hill, you can see here, we tuck, uh, we tuck down get the human DRS, get every last tenth we possibly can to try to beat the benchmark time of a 55.2. Through the first corner, felt good. We can go through there flat into the first hairpin. A little bit tricky, a little bit wider the apex, but it's not too bad. Now, it's up to me, really, as the one who's steering. I can sort of override or correct some of the... If it's a bit of a late break or too early in the power, I have to adapt my line. Um, so I'm just kind of taking in the data of our first lap and just re readjusting the f and you know fine tuning what I'm doing to perfect the line through the corner. So this is our second lap here. It feels good. Get on the power really early because of the weight. Then here it's flat out quite easily up the hill. It does seem to take quite a while. Tucking in once again to get every ounce of time that we possibly can. Human DRS fully in effect there. Really, really inspiring stuff. Through the first corner, a nice smooth line. Into the first corner, look at this though. A little bit late on the brakes and then a bit too uh, bit too eager on the power. We go a little bit wide and uh, we make that fine adjustment. So we come around again and we get it a lot better that time. Just turning in a bit earlier, heading towards the apex just to correct that. So after a couple of laps, I felt good, but it's hard to know how quick you are. Now, if you take a look at one of these pixels on this board, I could see that my time was a 54. I could see it. Not that you could, because those pixels were too pixely. But I was pretty sure that time was good enough. <laughs> you went so quick, like, right away. Yes, come on. What did we get? It was like first lap you beat everyone. 54! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. You can see on the on the board. No. <laughs> 
So Matt and I actually managed to get a lap record there because that is the fastest the two-seater car has ever driven around the circuit. So that's quite cool. My first ever Butmore Park lap record. But that is all from this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you to Butmore Park for all of these opportunities and for allowing me to drive a Formula One car around their track. Good to see the track back on its feet. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I shall catch you all next time. Goodbye.